Let me see if I can get the staff here. Okay, and then I'll do the show part and I won't say a thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get closer after you. Yeah, round of applause. Good morning. I forgot to practice my show four this morning, so that's that's why Pastor Joel is, is playing it here. Although I'm a former trumpet player, so maybe next week I could. Or in a couple weeks I could learn how to play. Good morning and welcome. Thank you again for joining us here at, at Prairie Lutheran Church as we gather outside in the midst of God's beautiful and wonderful creation to worship, to celebrate, and to give thanks for all the gifts that God has given us here in this life. This morning, we also welcome our baptismal family. We welcome Holly Claire Peterson and her family and friends and sponsors uh, this morning as we get to welcome her as a sister in the midst of the body of Christ. And so we are excited for that joy and privilege here this morning. Thank you as well uh, for joining us here, not only in the parking lot, but also way up on the berm up there in the shade. Uh, thank you uh, for being socially distanced here as we, we follow uh, our CDC uh, recommendations so we can safely worship and gather here together. And of course, welcome to all of you uh, joining us on Facebook Live. Colin, if you want to pan and we can give a wave to all the folks joining us out, uh, not only here in EP, but if you're up at the cabin or if you are overseas as well, thank you for joining us for worship here this morning. And we begin our worship this day with our wisdom recitation. It comes from the first chapter of the book of Isaiah. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And so this morning we begin our worship and meditation, prayer and music, as we gather our hearts and minds in the grace and the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Join me now for a time of confession. As one people, joined together through the wings of the Holy Spirit and held in the grace of Jesus Christ, I invite you now to hear these words of confession. May they call us to repentance. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that our attitude has often been poor. We have called us to be humble. We have instead been haughty. We have called us to serve. We have instead withheld. We have called us to love. We have instead shown disdain. Christ Jesus, through your love and compassion, you will inspire every tongue to call you Lord. And that same compassion, Forgive us when our failure to love reflects poorly on your gospel. Amen. Let's take a couple more moments for personal confession this morning.
Amen. Brothers and sisters, I have good news to proclaim to you. Jesus Christ has heard this, our confession. This morning, through and in the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as forgiven people this morning, we're not going to greet one another, but we are going to welcome a new member into the body of Christ. And so this morning, I'd like to welcome our baptismal family and Holly Claire Peterson, family and sponsors forward here this morning. The winds of the Holy Spirit are testing our, our Christ candle here this morning. Jonathan, am I getting juice on this one? You guys can hear it. Yeah? Okay. Okay. I'll talk loud. Today we welcome Holly Claire into God's family through the sacrament of baptism. God who is rich in mercy and love gives us a new birth into the living hope through the sacrament of baptism. The power of sin is put to death in this holy flood and we are raised with Jesus Christ to new life. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and sent out in mission for the life of the world. Parents and sponsors, whom do you present for holy baptism this day? Holly In Christian love, you have presented Holly for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring her to the services of God's house and teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As she grows in years, you should place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and for, provide for her instruction in the Christian faith, that living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the church, she may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. You promise to fulfill these obligations. If so, say yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Amen. water comes from the Jordan River, where our Savior Jesus Christ was baptized, and where we now celebrate the joining of our sister into the body of Christ. And let us pray. Holy God, breathe your spirit into this water, and into all who are gathered here today. Illumine our days. Enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your eternal fountain, and bring to birth the body of Christ, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Clara, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Clara, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And parents and sponsors, receive this candle. The winds of the Holy Spirit are buffeting beautifully here this morning. This candle is a symbol that Christ is the light of the world, and that you are to shine with the light of Christ 
always. And sisters and brothers, let's give a praise offering to God this morning as we welcome Holly Claire Peterson into the family of God. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see all of you, even from behind a mask. This morning's reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 and 17, and then 22 through 31. The Apostle Paul stands before a Greek audience and boldly declares that the unknown God they worship can actually be known. And this God is the Lord of heaven and earth. As followers of Jesus, we are missionaries to all in what we say and do. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For I walk around and look carefully at your objects of worship. I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. And some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Here ends the reading. Good morning, friends. My name is Miss Melanie, and I am delighted to share the children's message with you. I have my buddy Knox, who's going to come up and help. Uh, I would like to say hello to Natalie and Lincoln and Reed and Graham. I see Ensley. I see Kellen. Can you wave at me if you are a kiddo? I see Britta. Yes. Oh, I see some kids over there. Oh, hello, Addie and Clark. Good morning, guys. Hey, I am wondering if I could have four volunteers, four kids. Kellen, will you come up and stand by, Knox is putting up these hula hoops. You can stand in one of the hula hoops. I'm gonna give you something. All right, Knox, who else? Do you see any, who else would, can I get another? Oh, Graham, yes, will you come up here and stand in one of these hula hoops? You can pick. And I need one more volunteer. Oh, yes. Yes, come on up, honey. Come on up. Oh, Ensley, will you stand with your brother? Will you stand with Kellen? Awesome. Bird Jack girls, come on up. Come on up. So fun to see friends. Knox, do you think you could stand in one of these too? Thanks, buddy. And Fur Jacks, will you stand in this one? Hey, can you wave to everybody? Look at that. That's so cool. Come on up, girls. You guys can stand right here. Today is Father's Day. Will you raise your hand if you are a father? Raise your hand if you're a dad. I want to see. Guys, do you see all those dads out there? Awesome. Happy Father's Day. Okay, now raise your hand if you have a dad or had a dad or, yes. Oh, look at, look at everybody. 
Whoa! Awesome! Awesome! If you raised your hand, then today is a day to celebrate for sure. Today is Father's Day. Now, did any of you guys, or any of you guys out here, get your dad a card or a gift or something like that? Raise your hand if you're up here or back there. You did! Okay, cool. Today is a day that we say thank you to our dads for doing all that they do. And we also say I love you to our dads, right? I was thinking about my dad this morning, and I was thinking about some things that I wanted to thank him for. I called him this morning, and I'm going to call him again later today. So I was thinking of four things that I wanted to thank him for. And I'm going to hand, is it okay if I hand you guys the four things? All right. The first thing I want to thank my dad for, this is a little nerve-wracking. I'm going to... I'm going to hand this to you, and I'm trusting you, Kellen, to keep it in the hula hoop. What is it? What is it? It's a ball. I said thank you to my dad for playing with me. Raise your hand if you, did you, do you have a dad that plays with you? Yeah. Do you have a dad that plays with you? Yes. My dad taught me how to play. He, he taught me sports. He went to all my games. I played volleyball and basketball, and he was there every single time. All right, so he taught me how to play. He also, Graham, are you ready for yours? This one's kind of fun. Do you know what this is? Oh, it's a squishy. It's a squishy, but what kind of squishy is it? Bread. It's bread. Does that feel like bread, Graham? Don't worry, it's not real. <laughs> it's kind of squishy and warm, right? Bread. My dad, raise your hand if your dad makes sandwiches for you. Did, did your dad ever make sandwiches for you? My dad would make us peanut butter and marshmallow sandwiches. That was the best. Hey, Kellen, have you ever had a peanut butter and marshmallow sandwich? Okay, well then don't knock it until you try it. It's pretty great. I recommend mini marshmallows, though, not the big ones. They're easier to chew. But like, and then sometimes banana and peanut butter. So good. Try it sometime. So I wanted to thank him. Thank you for providing food for me. Okay, here's the next thing. You guys know what this is? Can you hold it? What is that? What is that? It's money. It's money? Sunglasses. Yeah. And sunglasses. Well, yeah, they, they're holding the sunglasses. I was thinking, all these things start with B. Ball, bread, bill, right? That's a bill. That's like a $100 bill. It's not real. My dad, I wanted to thank him for working hard for our family, for providing everything that we need. He worked hard. He was gone a lot. He worked a lot. He worked really hard. And then the last thing, it also starts with B. Can I hand it to you next? It is a book. a book. It starts with B. It's a book. It's a specific book. It's a Bible, right? So my dad read to me. Raise your hand if you had a dad, have a dad that reads to you, right? Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Our, da our dads read to us. Our dads provide for us. Our dads provide food for us. They maybe make us food, and they play with us. That's pretty great. I wanted to make sure that I thank my dad for those four things. They all start with B, right? Do you know what, friends? We have an earthly dad, and we have a heavenly father. And our heavenly father, God, he provides for us. He provides joy and play. He provides our daily bread. He provides work for us. And he provides his word for us, the Bible that guides us each day. All of these things are such a blessing. And you guys are so blessed to have a dad who loves you and loves to provide for you. All right, friends, will you fold your hands? Let's pray. Oh, you guys got your hands full. Do you think you can still fold them? Oh, yeah, look at Knox. He's holding it with his elbows. That's amazing. All right. Perfect. We're going to fold our hands and we're going to pray. Let's thank our Heavenly Father for all of the blessing. Let's close our eyes so we can think. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for Father's Day. We thank you for this beautiful Sunday. We thank you for this church. We thank you for our friends. We have so many things we can thank you for. Today, Lord, we thank you for our fathers, our earthly fathers, our Heavenly Father. And we thank you that you provide for us. You help us to play, to learn. You teach us with your word. We thank you, Lord, and you love us so much. 
Thank you that you made us, love us, and sent your son Jesus to be our very best friend. In Jesus' name, all the boys and girls said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Will you bring me all of your fun things? Oh, we just did play something. Was it the best game ever? <laughs> Thank you. Will you help me grab all the hula hoops, Kellen? And we'll put them together. I'll take the bill. It's not worth anything anyway. There we go. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming out. Hey, can we clap for these guys that came up? That was pretty great. Awesome. I'll take this. I'll take this. You can go back. Another mic going. Thank you, Miss Melanie. Appreciate that um, that wonderful knocks as well. Helping out with uh, the hula hoop. I'm glad you didn't ask me to do the hula hoop. I think everyone here is glad she didn't ask me to do it either. Good morning, Prairie Lutheran. It's great to see all of you on a, a wonderful, beautiful day in uh, Minnesota here. And um, first of all, I want to shout out a happy midsummer. Today's midsummer, and uh, this is the longest day of the year, uh, which means summer's begun, and uh, we're going to be having fun in the sun. Amen? Yeah. yeah, well, a memory that I have of midsummer is about 18 years ago, the opportunity that our family, uh, Sarah, myself, and our three sons, uh, traveled to Norway, and we were in Norway at midsummer. Uh, we went there partly because uh, our relatives and ancestors, we wanted to visit some of those locations. And it happened that we were there in Norway, which is the northern way. I mean, it's so far north that in Norway, 23 of the 24 hours of a day at that time is light. And I'll never forget, uh, we were playing soccer uh, at midnight just north of Oslo. And uh, it was like a 6v6 game. And we could see the ball as well as all of the players playing at midnight. Um, it was just sort of a, a lifetime experience because it's amazing what you can see when it's light out. And, and I think that's something that we are all especially appreciating now in this time of pandemic in which we have been for months and months and months been shuttered in place. And, and uh, finally, we're out and about, driving about. It's wonderful seeing people walking, fishing, biking, walking, running, doing all these activities. People are going back to stores, shopping. Folks are going off and grabbing a bite to eat at a, at a restaurant in the patio. It's great to see what's going on in the world again today. And that's what ties me into our lesson from Acts chapter 17. Luke, who is the author, he wrote the book of the gospel according to himself, Luke, and then he has the follow-up, sort of a continuing station. It's called the Acts of the Apostles. And we had this wonderful passage from the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. And it captures St. Paul when he is doing a walkabout. Some of the context is he's just come from Thessaloniki up north, and he's on his way to Corinth down south. So he is in Greece, but he has a stopover in the city of Athens. He's waiting for two of his assistants, Timothy and Silas, to catch up with him from Thessaloniki, and he's got a day off, a day free. And so as I mentioned, it, you know, imagine it, you know, Paul, I, I don't know, he's on the second floor hotel apartment, uh, comes down, has breakfast, has the waffle, he loves the waffles, uh, has a cup of coffee, and he goes up to the concierge and says, what should I do? I've got a free day in Athens. What do you suggest? And the concierge gives him the map. You know, we've done that before in New City. And he does a walk around. He's like a tourist. He's sightseeing for the entire day. And as, as Luke describes it, here is Paul wandering around the city of Athens. And one of the things that really comes out at Paul is that how many statues and shrines and holy places and chapels are dotted all around the city of Athens. And he marvels how religious the people in Athens are. And not only that, he, he starts talking to people in the marketplace and discussing what he's seeing as a, as a visitor and as a guest to, to understand what this new city is all about so that he can have some conversation and understand it. There's two things that really jumped out at me as I read today's lesson from Acts chapter 17 that Paul modeled. The first is this, that he was curious. Paul wanted to see what was in the marketplace. Paul wanted to see what was the life that he was a visitor in this new city. He wanted to understand. And then second of all, as he engaged in conversation with the residents of Athens, 
but he also was able to do was to connect the dots to Jesus. See, Paul was this, this ambassador of Christ, and he was always wanting to see how what he saw, what he experienced, connected to the crucified Christ that had saved him. I think you might call that, uh, Paul lived this active and confident faith, which is our mission statement at Pray Within Church. And so for me, where I connect with St. Paul and our lesson today in, in the 17th chapter of Acts is that I want to be like Paul. First, I want to be curious. And second, I want to be able to connect what I see with Jesus. This past month, I've been walking around. It's been very light out. It's summer, and I've been able to get out more and about uh, than I have, like yourselves, much more than before. And I've been walking around our community and in our city and looking and listening to what's going around in the world, I'm seeing so much heartbreak. And I'm curious, why? And as I listen and I see so much of this heartbreak, I want to see where Jesus is in that as well. Some of the places where I've been walking about in, in our community in Minneapolis is on Lake Street. A couple, two weeks ago, um, we probably, it was all in the news and we saw how devastated it was by riots and looting. And then also I've been visiting 38th in Chicago, the location where George Floyd was killed. And as I visit those places, like Paul, I'm talking to people and I'm waiting for airplanes to go by overhead. And as I listen to people and as I talk to people, I'm asking myself, where does Jesus fit in? You see, one of the options I think we have as church is that we can continue in sort of a pandemic attitude. Let's shelter in place. Let's not go out into the world and know what's going on but let's stay hunkered down in here and let the world go on and do what it is doing. But I'm compelled by St. Paul who got out. He had never been to Athens before. This is strange territory for him. He was curious and he wanted to learn and he wanted to connect what he saw with Jesus. And as I go around and look and listen in this past month, the thing that I'm listening to and learning about is this issue of racism. It's an issue that it is so hard to face, but it's an issue that I want to know, where is Jesus in this? As Paul was walking around, he identified with the folks of Athens. He said, I've noticed that there's one, one statue, one temple, and on it it says, to an unknown God. And he wanted to ask them about what that is, and he wanted to tell them what he believed, what was being revealed to him. I know in my life there is so much I don't understand about our world and what's going on right now. And so I am struggling and listening and trying to understand all the things that are unknown to me, especially when it gets into the tough issue of racism. You probably have heard that, uh, I mean, everybody's talking about it. I have a friend. Um, who works for General Mills. And, and like so many corporations, they're doing this what's called listening sessions. And they're just asking people to say, what has your experience been in your life? And this friend who um, works for General Mills described one of the senior executives there. He's a black male. And he related just two things uh, that, sh that uh, this friend related back to me. And first of all, this, this black executive said, you know, one thing that I do is that whenever my kids go shopping, I tell them to make sure they get a receipt for whatever they purchase so that when they leave the store, if they get stopped, they can prove that they were not shoplifting. And then also he says, you know, whenever he goes out to, for a walk, he always asks himself, should I bring my kids along? Because he realizes he's much safer as a black man with children with him than a black man walking by himself. 
my friend and myself. I mean, that's a parallel universe. I had no idea I'm like that. Uh, there's uh, all this unknown stuff in my life that I am learning about. And then I want to connect the dots. I want to understand where is Jesus in this ignorance that I have, in this unknown reality that so many people in America are living. I want to share just one verse. It's verse 30 of Acts uh, 17. See if I can watch this. All right, there, okay. Maybe I can, I'll go like this over my shoulder right there. How's that? O over the shoulder, Mike. This is Acts chapter 17, verse 30. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance. But now, Paul says, he commands all people everywhere to repent. In the past, God overlooked our ignorance, but now he asks all people everywhere to repent. You know, repent is a, it's a big word. It's a heavy word. But it's a word that runs all the way through Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And especially in the New Testament, repentance is a mind load of incredible promise for us. St. John the Baptist began his ministry. Jesus talked about Paul, James, John, all of the apostles that are written and writers of the New Testament focus on repentance. The Greek word for to repent is metanoia. It means to literally to turn around or to, to have second thoughts. You know, we all live and we've been trained and it works well that we live usually by our first thoughts. We see something, we hear something, and the first thought that comes to my mind, that's how we act. And for the majority of our life, that works really well. Metanoia means to have second thoughts, because sometimes our first thoughts don't work out too well. And oftentimes what happens with our first thoughts, we end up with either wanting to fight or to have a flight response. And Jesus, as it always does, he has a third way. And instead of fighting or fleeing, He's forgiving. Jesus is forgiving. And he invites us to forgive and to be forgiven. Here's the thing. Forgiveness is like a key that unlocks something that's locked up. And I believe confession is that lock that we identify that needs forgiving. If we have no locks in our life, we don't need any forgiving. Here at Prayer Lutheran Church, we identify sins in our life and in the world so that God can get after it and do his forgiving in the world and in our life. You remember about a year plus, um, there was that shooting at the uh, uh, synagogue called the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 11 people were murdered in that mass shooting. And when that happened, Prairie Lutheran identified that and called it out and said, anti-semitism is a sin and in response we created you if you were here you probably remember we created a sympathy scroll it was eight feet long three feet wide and we invited everyone who was there at worship that morning to write a condolence to the survivors of the synagogue in pittsburgh we rolled it up and we mailed it to them and then you probably remember last year in christchurch new zealand there was that massacre of a, of a mosque in New Zealand and at that time we called out that violence against Muslims is a sin and once again we created a sympathy scroll and we all wrote condolences and we sent it overseas to New Zealand and then you probably remember at El Paso there was another shooting we ran out of scrolls and then last month on May 25 George Floyd was murdered he was killed and what we did in response is that we are calling out that racism is a sin. And in response, we have made this prayer wall around the green area right here, and I invite you to look at it after worship today. A place of meditation and reflection and ownership to say, God, what am I not knowing in my life and in the world? You know what the last words of Jesus was? before he was crucified and as he hung on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
this morning, I need to confess to you, I am a sinner. And there's so much that I do not know in my own heart that I am ignorant and I do not know what I'm doing. But I've set my path on a course so that I can listen and learn and confess. Because it's only in confessing that we can be forgiven. I have a friend who calls it forgiven living. On the one hand, we learn and we listen. On the other hand, we say, I'm sorry. And then Jesus comes in and he floods us with that third way of forgiveness. Today's midsummer. It's the longest day of the year, which means that the earth and the sun are the closest they ever will be. We are getting close to the light. And when you are close to the light, you can see so much better. You can see all the things that were hidden in the darkness. As for me and my household, we're going to follow the Lord. We're going to stay midsummer all the time so that we can see what God is revealing in my heart and in the world and to confess what I don't know, what you don't know, so that the love of Jesus Christ can forgive us again and again and again, and we can be a congregation that's filled with forgiven living. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for today. We thank you for dads. We thank you for you being our Heavenly Father. And God, we thank you also for this opportunity on midsummer to come close to the light and the love of Jesus Christ. And Lord, the closer we come to you, the more sinful we realize we are. We don't deserve to stand in your presence. We are sorry, but thank you that you forgive us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people prayed. Amen. Our service continues with a dance. Direct your attention to the left side of the sanctuary. Thank you, dancers, for uh, sharing that wonderful gift of, of uh, celebration. And thanks for dancing on asphalt. I mean, that's got to be tough, <laughs> no matter what. Uh, outstanding. Thank you so much. Hey, for our mission moment today, uh, we are connected to a, a wonderful organization in Eden Prairie, the Interfaith Table. Uh, and what that uh, ministry does is it gathers uh, people around uh, Eden Prairie and the southwest suburbs of different faiths, and it celebrates uh, the differences and the commonalities. And um, 
This morning, we've got a special request for you. Uh, they're, they're asking all the faith communities in Eden Prairie especially to give a shout out and a, a, a hello. And uh, we have uh, Sarah Steichen Stiles, uh, who actually has the, was the choreographer of the dance. Um, she's gonna be taking a video of all of us, a 30 second little video, and this is how it's gonna go. I'll say on, on three, uh, first of all, I'm gonna ask you to stand up, turn around, and then wave, and on three say, hello from Prairie Lutheran, and uh, it'll have the building and all of us together like that. Um, and it will be viewed um, sometime this summer or fall, depending, uh, when it all gets edited and, and packaged together. Uh, to celebrate that physically distant, but spiritually connected. So, Prairie Luthien, ready? Okay, I'm going to invite you. Let's all stand up and turn around. And uh, Sarah is on the hill waving to you. And when I say three, let's shout out, welcome, no, hello from Prairie Lutheran. One, two, three. Hello from Prairie Lutheran. Yay! God bless. Thank you. You can turn around and have a seat. As you may have noticed, we are not passing around the offering plates this morning. They are uh, right inside the building. They're being taken care of, so no need to worry about uh, our offering trays. Uh, they're in good shape. We do have green baskets. Yes, there's a second one right over there. So if you'd like to place your offering in the green baskets this morning, you are certainly welcome to do so. Hopefully the winds of the spirits won't blow those baskets away. Otherwise, certainly feel free to mail in uh, your offering to the church with the United States Postal Service. We've gotten to know our postman quite well here. His name is Jim. He does a wonderful job each and every day. So thank you to all the postal workers out there uh, who continue uh, to work and to deliver our mail in a timely fashion. And of course, you can also go to our church website, plcchurch.org, uh, and you can make an online contribution as well. This morning, we center our hearts and our minds. We enter into this time of prayer, and we do so with music and song.
Thank you, Jody. That was wonderful. I invite you to stand as you are able, as together we pray for the world, the church, and all of God's beautiful creation. Each petition will end, O Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Creator God, you are the breath in our bodies, the wind that rustles the trees, and the music of the birds of the air. You have crafted the land and the sea with beauty and with wonder. You have made all people in your image and clothed them with your grace and your love. I thank you now and always for the abundance of your blessings and your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the shepherd of your people. Guide us with wisdom. Equip us with your strength and lead us to peace and healing. Help us hear and see your presence in the world around us. And lead us as one people in the way of forgiveness and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, you have hope and healing that is constant. This week we lift these people to you in prayer. Mason Linscott, Derek Gates' mother, Maudlin, Stephanie Stiles, and Jared Spanbauer. In our pain and grief, hold us close and remind us of the promise of new life we receive in Jesus. This day we also lift up in prayer those we name now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day for all the fathers and father figures in our lives. Thank you for providing them with wisdom, courage, patience, and a love that reflects your glory each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us join together our voices with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I would like to invite up Pastor Joel for a couple of announcements this morning. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, thank God for this beautiful day. A few clouds came in and uh, gave us some shelter, but I know for some caution, for uh, however, we're, I'm not used to it. I feel like I just came out and I'm just uh, getting ready for a sunburn or something. Um, so get ready for summertime and we will continue to worship out here in our parking lot uh, until I'm thinking maybe October. I don't know. Um, I, I, who wants to go inside uh, when we can be outside as well? It's just gorgeous and, and wonderful. Thank you to the staff for all the work that you do to set up and take down all of our volunteers, hospitality team. Uh, and just to send off, enjoy this Father's Day. I hope you have an opportunity to say, give a shout out to your dad um, or a grandpa or whatever. And uh, just uh, give to God thanks and praise for our life. In Jesus' name, amen. And as you're able, I invite you to stand to receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.